Hey guys, today is the day we do the review and go over on setting up our Ryzen build over here. Um, now the topic of today is the cooling. Uh, we are currently using a Corsair H60 uh, all-in-one water cooler. Uh, we also use two other coolers on the uh, system uh, prior. Uh, that being said, let's get right down into it. Um, one of the coolers, and this is the H60 that we have in there now. Now keep in mind, we are not using this stock fan. Uh, it was determined, at least by me, that that fan was not putting enough air pressure through to really keep this chip cool. I think if we were using the stock fan, it would not be keeping it down in the temps that we're in now. And I will give you guys a show of that as well. But we started out with the Cooler Master Hyper T4, which is actually right next to the 212 Evo. Uh, the only difference that I have seen so far is the heat pipe design and orientation going through the aluminum fins and everything else. Uh, but we used that as well, again, without the stock fan. Uh, I do believe I have this fan lying around somewhere. I do not remember where. Uh, it might actually be in the box. Uh, that being said, though, um, it, it did a really good job. You know, for stock speeds and stuff like that, it does okay. The only issue that I could foresee is this heat pipe design right here on each side. Now that design coupled with the uh, Asus uh, X370 Prime Pro, it was actually touching right on the RAM and pushing that RAM off to one side. So we tested it out regardless and found that yeah it does an okay job as a stock Cooler. It just does not have that extra power you need, an extra TDP needed to really just pull away from that. Uh, we actually went with modified voltages on this, and we were still thermaling out at 3.775 gigahertz, which is the TPU1 setting inside the BIOS on the motherboard. So that was really a downside. I was hoping that this heatsink being newer performed well. Um, but overall, for you know a $20 heatsink, that's not bad. I mean, to be able to run it at stock with a little bit of boost behind it, she fluctuated right into 3.5. Uh, yeah, my hands are dirty today. Uh, I've been busy working on the car, but uh, you know, again, I digress here. Um, you know, it, it's overall, outside of those two things, the cooler did okay. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it for this board and this orientation as, you know, again, it does push on the RAM and pushes that RAM off to one side. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, next up, we used, and I've had this cooler for some time. We used a Scythe Yasia fan. Uh, really awesome cooler. Now keep in mind that, um, excuse me again here. Uh, I think I'm developing allergies again already. The weather has gotten nice, but again, I digress. Uh, keep in mind that one thing that is definitely different, and I can show you here physically, if I didn't set the cooler over on a shelf somewhere. Uh, originally, I had this cooler back in 2010-2011. And it, it was a really awesome cooler. I really like it. Um, very big, bulky, and heavy, though. So, that being said, uh, I actually overclocked to Q6600 on this for a year until I burnt the chip up because it just really wasn't enough for anything beyond that. I actually lapped the processor, being the Q6600, and I lapped this heatsink here. So actually, this plate at the bottom, as you see it now, is nickel-coated. 
It's nickel plated right now in this picture. However, on mine, it, it's down into the copper. So when we actually did this heat sink, it actually did really, really well. I, I was actually surprised it did. It actually performed temperature wise better uh, for cooling off the Ryzen 7 1700X. Now, I did get mine from Newegg, but Newegg doesn't sell it anymore. I don't know if they even make this thing anymore. But it is a really, really, really nice heatsink. Um, now, again, uh, some of the problems that we ran into, we ran into, again, the same with this one, just not as bad. Uh, one of the downsides to this heatsink that we used was the offsetting of these side fins here. Uh, it, in order to change out the RAM in bay one, that heatsink was literally doing this number two. I mean, it wasn't touching the RAM or nothing, but it was overlapping right on top of it. So overall, I, I, if you have this heatsink, if you do have it, I recommend using it. You know, if you don't have the money for an air cooler, but you have this heatsink, uh, I would recommend watching a video on lapping. Uh, it's one thing that, you know, we might do for here at our channel. Um, and I might try to actually find one that hasn't been lapped again, just so I can get all my parts and pieces again, because I've actually lost all that too. Uh, but that being said, uh, it did okay going into 3.77 gigahertz. The moment we brought it up to the TPU2 setting, again in the ASUS BIOS, which brought it up to 3.825 megahertz, so 3.8 gigahertz, you know, it, again, it's air. The problem that we ran into is, again, you know, this is a... 125 watt TDP heatsink and with the processor under full load hitting in the 130s eh, it was kind of mm, okay you know again we were hitting our limits we were getting close to that thermal point so when we hit that got close to it and I realized it we just stopped the test right there and just shut it down I let her get into about 80 384 degrees Celsius uh, and just sh shut the test down at that point. Uh, keep in mind we were using Prime 95 and using the AI suite to monitor the temps. Um, but again, a really good heatsink. Actually, it, it honestly exceeded any and all expectations I had because I, I thought it was honestly going to be a bit worse than the T4 by Cooler Master. Um, so that being said, this heatsink honestly outperformed everything that I expected it would. Uh, and it's actually a really nice thing to see that. Now keep in mind that we are using an AM2 to AM3 Plus style mounting with this. We are using the stock mounting and everything else with the new AM4 bracket. Again, it has been confirmed, and I'm confirming it here myself. You can use a stock AM4 heatsink on an or an AM3, AM2 to AM3 plus heatsink, a mounting type on the AM4 style. So long as you're using the stock uh, retention bracket, uh, there it is. I'm actually going to get this for you guys. So. To give you an idea, uh, this is a bracket I have lying around uh, for AM2, AM3. Um, actually, AM2 plus AM3. Uh, what it is, is as long as you use this piece right here, this plastic piece, you're fine. You're perfectly fine. And I'm dropping stuff on the desk again. Um, and it'll work perfectly fine. Uh, as far as the back plate goes and the screw holes go, do not try to use a screw down type AM2, AM3 
all in one cooler, be it water or anything else, to mount it to an AM4 board. It will not fit. As long as you use the stock plastic, this yellow piece, on your cooling mount, you're fine. You can use it. Um, that being said, this brings us into the Cooler Master um, H60. Now, this is what blew my mind. Um, and, and I'm just going to let you guys see what our temps are here while we talk about it. As you guys can see, it's got a 12% increase, running at 100 by 38.25, and the fans are on a curve right now. Um, the CPU fan, once it warms up, does increase its speed all the way to max. So, you know, we are running at, you know, a good 53 degrees Celsius. Now, that being said, uh, the H60, I'm still on the fence about. Now, the reason being is when you do water cooling, and this is one of the problems we actually came across, and I'm actually going to pull up a picture of the board here just to give you an idea. Seventy row. We're gonna go to ASUS's website here for this one. Okay. Here's the first problem with air, water cooling. With air cooling, you have airflow basically hitting these fins here in one way or the other. Uh, this, this is a much better picture. Uh, with air cooling, you're having air hit these VRM fins to some degree. So, so that actually helps bring that temperature from way up here to way down in here. A little bit. Um, that being said, uh, you know, the H60 does work. Uh, what we did was, and as you saw in the build video, building the Ryzen BTRB, building the Ryzen build, I was able to put a 120 mil fan right above this one here, which actually blew down right across everything, blew right on the top video card and everything else. Now there's a fan right in this area on the back of the case that I have exhausting as well. But, Let's get our tech specs out for the H60. Um, the H60 stock fan has a 74.4 CFM. I can tell you right now, that is not enough. Uh, you need at least 80 to 90 CFM regardless for cooling a 1700X at the speeds that we're at now even at idle. Um, I can slow, as you can tell, it is actually jumping up to 58 and then lowering back down. But even at idle, I will barely hit 60. Okay? Um, you know, I might hit 60, 61, 62 at idle. But she does not overheat under full load. And that is what counts. Now, one thing that we did have to do is I actually had to bump the voltage up a hair. A hair. Um, we were sitting at roughly uh, uh, 1.2625 volts. I think I brought her up to 1.28 volts. Uh, the reason being is we were seeing some lag during boot up coming into the OS. So we knew I was using a lot of power at that point, we just didn't know how much. 
Now, keep in mind, I never noticed it before because we had it on the table over here. Uh, it was being cooled directly. It had one video card in it. I wasn't running SLI. I wasn't running RAID. I wasn't running six, dr seven drives off this thing, which is where... You know, once you add in all these features, again, you're going to have to change your voltages. So, that being said, um, you know, right now the H60, we're again running at idle. I have the fan running at 1,804 RPMs. So, we're operating just above, to my knowledge, and, and I am going to get a fan meter to read out CFMs directly because I do have another one of these fans. We are going to run a CFM test to really see what exactly these fans are pushing that I'm using. All I can tell you guys is this. They push a lot, they pull a lot. That I do know. I mean, they will suck a piece of paper and they will hold it there. The only way to get the piece of paper off is to either make sure you have enough overhang to pull it, or if you just put a piece of paper right in on it, you're going to have to shut the system off to get it off the radiator. Um, depending on your orientation amount, okay? Uh, again, you know, it's a multi-platform mounting adapter, it uses LGA 2011. 1366, 1155, 1156, and 775. Um, now, the one thing that they are not saying here is that it does use the AM4. Now, here's why. And actually, I shut that picture down too quick. The mounting bracket for this sits right on top, right in here. And then it has two tabs, one going this way, one going that way, that you can just, you know, put two eye hooks on that comes in the kit, and then you screw the screws down on it and tightens it up. It, it works really well. Um, so that being said, uh, would I recommend this cooler if you're going to run with stock voltages at 37.5? 3.775 gigahertz. Mm. No. I, I can't. I, I just can't. Guys, I, I really cannot recommend this if you're going to use the stock fan. Um, it, it's one of those things that I do not believe in. You know, you're going to uh, overclock something. You're going to clock something up higher. Fine. Do it. Do it right. Uh, one thing that we are going to do is I need to make a trip up to Micro Center. And that is in the works. Actually, I've got to go up there. I've got to see a friend. I need to make a trip into Micro Center. We need to go full water cooling with this system. We also need to change the case out to do it. Uh, I've been looking at cases and anything that I have found that's going to be remotely roomy enough to really do what we need to do is not cheap. Um, but I want to get up to Micro Center. I want to look at cases. I want to look at their water cooling setups, everything like that, because we're going to have to put a custom loop in this. Uh, we're also going to put in more than likely a custom loop for the GTX 760s. Either that or I'm going to upgrade them and put a custom loop in on that. Because, again, if you look at the prior video, building the Ryzen build and fully putting it in this case, the space is only about that much between the cards. And they make heat. I mean, the back of these cards will get hot. Uh, I can actually give you guys a good representation of it to within reason. Here's Brit's H760 uh, GTX. You've got about that much room between these cards now. Okay? That's not enough because the back here, the back right in here, that, that's going to get hot. Now, the one thing I have done is I've put a fan in the case that blows right in on this side and this section right here on the card. 
So we're blowing right in this section, right in here, maybe up in here a little bit, near the GPU area. Um, and for the sake of quietness, because that is the goal with water cooling here, um, for the sake of being quiet, because I've already got enough noise in here as is with the server running right here next to me down here, that this thing is loud. And when I when the fans ramp up on the uh, cooling on this to full speed, it gets even louder down here. I mean, you can actually hear those fans over the server. It, it gets that bad. But um, if you're going to run stock speeds and things of that nature, yeah, get the H60. It's fine. It's fine at that point. I mean, it really is. But if you're going to do any type of overclocking, you're going to have to change out the fan. You're going to have to put a high CFM fan in there. You're, you're just going to really have to put something in there that's going to put a lot of airflow behind it and get that air across to cool the water and liquid in there down. Um, with that being said, I would recommend a 240 millimeter or larger fan radiator. I really would. Um, it, it would do a better job. You know, again, run the system for an hour, put it under a load test, high heat load test, and then go from there. Uh, you can't just use one of these 120s on it and expect it to run perfectly fine. So I would say anything for a 1700X and the 1800X run a 240 rad without a doubt in my mind run a 240 millimeter radiator um, because again you you are not going to get enough performance out of this to do it um, and to do that with a, a Corsair 800i version 2 you're going to either need the conversion plate for AM4 for it, which last time I checked Corsair doesn't have yet, or you're going to have to get the Cor the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero because it can use the stock AM2 mounting plate holes. Uh, that's the only thing I can say about that cooler. Uh, as a catch-up, because uh, today is Friday, Britt is on his way over. We, we will be recording a show for you guys tonight. Um, but to give you guys an update on him, his board is on the way. So tonight we're going to look at cases for him and I. We're going to look at RAM for him and everything else. So uh, keep your eyes on the channel. We should have a video going up again soon uh, with our new show. This video will be going up here today, uh, just before he gets here more than likely. So uh, guys, if you like the video, like the talk on it, thumbs up, like it. Don't like it, you know what to do. Uh, don't forget to share and subscribe as we do want to get uh, more people in on the channel. Now, if there's something that I missed, you want to know more about um, regarding the three coolers that we use, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to reply with a comment. If it's something super in-depth, uh, I will even go as far as to making another video to get dedicated directly to that cooler. Um, so you guys have fun building up your systems and everything else. Uh, again, picking out a cooler is always key, but picking out a cooler and having enough airflow in your system is definitely always key. So, uh, again, guys, uh, Donald here, I'm out of here. Uh, we got to get set up for our, uh, recording here so have fun take it easy build up those systems good and heavy and we will be doing our next video regarding the ryzen for gaming uh 
actually we're going to be putting it on gaming for Overwatch. So I will definitely have some good clips of this at this point. I've been playing with it recently, and we've been doing great. So have fun, guys.